dorsal approach to the forearm, wrist, and carpus, a video explaining the surgical approach. This video has been produced from a book source. We would like to thank editors Mar D. Miller and Bobby Chabra and Joseph S. Park and Francis H. Shen and David B. Weiss and James A. Brown. Citation Miller, Mark D., Anika Chabra, James A. Brown, Joseph S. Park, Francis H. Shen and David B. Weiss. Orthopedic Surgical Approaches, 2008. Synovectomy of the extensor tendons, dorsal ganglion cyst excision, limited total wrist, arthrodesis, proximal row carpectomy, open reduction and internal fixation, ORIF of a distal radius fracture, scaphalinate ligament repairs, extensor tendon repairs at the level of the distal forearm, vascularized bone grafting from the distal radius, fixation of proximal pole, scaphoid fractures, and a posterior interosseous nerve neurectomy. The length of the incision depends on the procedure being performed. Superficial dissection, figure. Skin and subcutaneous tissues are dissected down to the extensor retinaculum above the fourth extensor compartment. The dorsal approach to the distal forearm and wrist. Superficial dissection exposes the extensor retinaculum. The retinaculum is divided between the third and fourth extensor compartments. Deep dissection. Incise the extensor retinaculum between the third and fourth compartments. See figure. Transpose the EPL and dissect under the extensor compartments but above the joint capsule. The posterior interosseous nerve terminal branch is in the floor of the fourth extensor compartment. A posterior interosseous nerve neurectomy can be performed at this point if indicated. Retract the third and fourth extensor compartments to expose the dorsal extrinsic wrist ligaments and joint capsule. C figure. Incise the dorsal capsule over the distal radius and extend the incision distally to expose the distal radius, radiocarpal joint, and carpal bones. C figures. Dorsal intercarpal ligament sparing approach. A. The dorsal approach to the distal forearm and wrist. The extensor pollicis longus, EPL, is transposed radially, and the fourth compartment tendons are retraced ulnarly to expose the underlying dorsal capsule. The posterior interosseous nerve and artery are on the floor of the fourth extensor compartment. B. The dorsal wrist approach with capsule sparing. DIC, dorsal, intercarpal, DRCL, dorsal radiocarpal ligament. EDC, extensor digitorum communis, pin, posterior interosseous nerve. Retract the third and fourth extensor compartments to expose the dorsal extrinsic wrist ligaments and joint capsule, see figure. Incise the dorsal capsule over the distal radius and extend the incision distally to expose the distal radius, radiocarpal joint and carpal bones, see figures. Dorsal intercarpal ligament sparing approach. Hazards. Superficial cutaneous nerve branches. Superficial sensory radial nerve. Dorsal ulna cutaneous nerve. Dorsal veins should be preserved if possible. When dividing the capsule, do not violate the interosseous scaphalinate ligament. Proximal extension. Extension of the approach can be performed proximally in a subperiosteal manner along the radial shaft. Proximal exposure should be limited to the level of the outcropper muscles and the musculotendinous junction of the extensor muscles. Distal extension over the metacarpal shafts can be performed in a subperiosteal manner. Thanks for watching. Orthopedics trauma in YouTube.